Good morning, friends. Challenges uh, this morning, but it's lovely to be with you as we reflect on the Word of God and we'll be taking time to pray together. I am reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 19, and reading from verse 23 to verse 30, Matthew 19 verse 23 to verse 30. Listen to the word of God. Matthew 19, 23 to 30. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples hear this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth at the renewal of all things. When the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or field for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. May the Lord bless to us the reading of his way now and always. Amen. Friends, such a, a, a lovely and powerful text that we that we have read uh, from Matthew, Matthew 19 verses 23 to 30. And well, if you, if you want to sum up what we read about in Matthew um, 19, 23 to 30, it's, it's about the cost of discipleship. What what does it cost to be the disciple of Jesus? Um, and today as we gather, we, we are very conscious of the presence of God with us and the power of the words of Jesus. Jesus speaks these words after a rich young ruler sorrowfully walked away when faced with a prospect of surrendering his wealth to follow Jesus. And Jesus used this incident to teach his disciples, and not only his disciples, but us as well, about the challenges of affluence and the attachment posed in the journey to eternal life. He highlights the difficulties faced by those heavily burdened by their possessions, revealing the radical requirements for entering the kingdom of God. And maybe, well, there, there are four critical things that come out of this text. One for me will be uh, the difficulty of riches. 
Jesus emphasizes the entering the kingdom of heaven is especially difficult for the rich. In a culture that often values wealth and possession above all else, it is easier, easy to become entangled in material and prioritize earthly success. So the accumulation of wealth can create a false sense of security and hinder our wholehearted commitment to God. And, well, you, you know, there has always, when a text like this is read, there is always a, a challenge of, of richness, of how do, you, how do you define rich people? And so we know that there, there are people who can be materially wealthy and spiritually poor. There can be people who are poor materially but spiritually rich. So I am just very conscious of, of those two sides of wealth when we come to a text like this. But here it, it, it shows that anyone who has possessions, who value possessions, who has things and you are attached to them, um, those possessions and their attachments can pull us away from being able to focus fully on our Lord Jesus. But the second thing that we see again here is the impossibility of human effort. The disciple, astonished by Jesus' statement, questioned who can be saved and Jesus uses this opportunity to remind them and to remind us as well that salvation cannot be attained through human effort or even willpower. No matter how well intentioned, or our own strength will always fall short. But we need to take heart that Jesus assures us that with God all things are possible. And then the third thing is, as we follow from Peter, Peter's question about what reward is there for them? What is the reward of discipleship? What, how, how will we get rewarded in following Jesus? How uh, will he uh, compensate us for all what we put into this journey. And I have always understood that um, we, we have already earned an incredible reward in Jesus dying for our sins. And taking my life and your life uh, upon himself. I have always understood that the exchange of lives, me or you giving your life to Jesus and gaining the life of Jesus, it's, it's a complete and total reward of what we get because it comes with the promise of eternal life. But Jesus is saying here, as he responds to Peter, Say, all those who, who, who follow Jesus, they have an incomparable reward. The reward that, that we have cannot be, cannot be compared to anything because it is, it is big, it is, it is huge, it is beyond our grasp. It is beyond our understanding. Those who make sacrifices for his name's sake will not only inherit eternal life, but also will receive a hundredfold of blessings in this life. Jesus assures us that our sacrifices, whether material 
or relational will not go unnoticed or unrewarded. And then finally, there, there is a, a new order in the kingdom of God. Something that, that is beyond understanding, something that is beyond the grasp. Jesus has to come to the end of that portion of scripture that we have read. Reminds us that in the kingdom of God, there is a reverse order than what the world often look at. The values and the expectations in the kingdom seems to have been reversed from what we know in the world. It is completely different. The ways of heaven, the ways of God's kingdom is quite different from the ways of the world. Listen to this. He says, when the first are always first in the world and the last are last, that is not like that in God's kingdom. He overturns the whole thing. And in God's kingdom, when the priorities are done, when we, we, we have prioritized service to humankind and to others above ourselves, when we, when we take the humble path, a humble posture of our Savior, who came not to serve, who came not to be served, pardon me, but to serve. And so he says in this that the first will be last. And the last will be first. Look at that radical transformation. And how this order of things is reversed. So as we, as we understand the, the words of Jesus, we are challenged to examine our lives uh, to, to look at our own hearts, to, um, to look at our priorities in, lives, in life. Are we, what choices are we making? Do we feel pulled and attached to things of the world? Or are we going to see beyond the worldly possessions and see um, the power in the mind of Christ that we become more devoted, that we, we live lives of sacrifice, life of, lives of giving ourselves to him, where we become disciples and we live a life of sacrificial discipleship, a life of total surrender to Jesus Christ as we follow him. Let us remember that with God, the things that appear and seem to be impossible become possible. And the reward of discipleship are far greater than anything we may leave behind. So friends, I, I pray that uh, God will bless you, God will, God will embrace you, God will fill you with grace and with love, with mercy and with, with grace. And that you will be blessed in a very deep, deep way.
I invite you that we join together in prayer. Let us pray. We come before you today grateful for your unending love and the gift of salvation through your son Jesus Christ. As we reflect on the cost of discipleship of Father portrayed in Matthew 23, we humbly ask for your guidance and strength that we may be able to follow you wholeheartedly. Lord, we acknowledge, we, we acknowledge that sometimes at the pool of wealth and earthly possessions stand in the way of what you want us to do. And it is quite easy to succumb to the pools of materialistic tendencies in the world that sometimes might offer a temporary security rather than giving us a more comprehensive and permanent promises of your presence with us in, your, in our lives. So we turn to miss seeking our fulfillment in you and in you alone. <coughs> Father, help us to redirect our hearts towards the eternal treasures that can only be found in a deep and vibrant relationship with you. We pray for the courage to release our grip on our worldly attachment, recognizing that nothing compares to the joy of knowing you, and reach our lives with a spirit of contentment, understanding that the true wealth lies not in what we possess, but in the richness of our relationship with you and with others. <coughs> Excuse me. Lord, we lift up those who may be struggling with the sacrifices of discipleship. Strengthen them, Lord, and provide them with the unwavering faith and endurance as they face challenges and hardships along the way. May they find the solace in the promise of a hundredfold reward in this life and eternal life in your presence. Father, equip us with a hearts of saints that we may partake in the establishment of your kingdom here on earth. Help us and teach us to prioritize saving others above ourselves demonstrating selfless love and compassion as Jesus did. May we be instruments filled with your grace, sharing it abundantly with those in need. We thank you, Father, for the immeasurable blessings you have bestowed upon us. We are grateful for the gift of salvation and the privilege of being called your children. Guide us as we strive to follow Christ faithfully, embracing the cost of discipleship and witnessing the transforming power of your love in our lives. We offer these prayers in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, friends. Thank you for um, for tuning in. Um, I am just conscious of tuning in from various parts of the world. I see Stanton in Thailand, 
Um, uh, just been great being with you and um, mom told me quite a lot about her recent visit to you and your family. I am very conscious of that. Tom, um, tuning in as well. We are so, so grateful for friends and just for your commitment to being part of, of, of this and and what you what you continue to do i i am humbled by how the lord is rallying us around but above all how how the lord continue to to answer our prayers i will invite that if there are any specific prayers um that we um, that you have people that you might think of uh, just put them on the chat line for me to pick up and and pray for them. I have a list of uh, people who have approached for prayers and that we will just love to offer offer them prayers. Um, pray this in Jesus' name as we offer those. But have a great week, friends, and may the Lord bless you. And May he guide you, may he strengthen you, may he fill you with grace, with his love. Um, I am also very mindful of friends that are traveling and we pray for traveling messes and safety in places and the destination and your destinations. Have a great week. Lovely friends. Thank you. God bless you.